This video has come as a result of some of the trees I've seen recently. Trees which uh, students have sent in to me in their paintings and some of them are quite interesting. Let's just think about what a tree is. There's the earth, okay? It starts off as a little seed and it sends out roots and then it grows up and it's a little sapling. But as it gets bigger and bigger, the roots become more and more and the trunk gets thicker and thicker. And as it gets bigger, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and the roots go deeper. And depending how big it gets, it needs to have a good basis to support the growth. Okay, now I've seen some that have just been like... And you think, well, that's not going to support anything. So please think about how things are made. I often say this, when you look at a subject, look at it closely. Don't just see it, look at it, okay? So this is particularly with trees. Now they're all different, okay? Some of them are very tall and thin and they don't look as if they've got much to, to support them. And some are really wide because if you think about it, you know when a tree is cut through, you get rings and that shows you the age of the tree, how many rings there are, because it gets bigger and wider. As you get more growth up above ground, you need a strong support and the roots below. So having said that, let's look at a tree. I'm going to look in particular at a fir tree. I was presented with a few the other day. Okay, now we'll oh look, there's a line there. So we'll imagine that we have a fir tree there. Now I am, for those who want to know, using a Pro Art Renaissance Sable 6, number 6. So let us just start off with a bit of raw umber, just to make a, a trunk arrangement. So let us imagine, dear friends, that it's grown up from down below, okay? So you can see that usually they sort of splay out at the bottom and sometimes you see roots above the ground and sometimes they separate, okay? So, and as that goes up, it usually gets narrower and narrower. I haven't left myself a lot of space there actually, so Let's just do a bit of a fir tree. Now, this is also about being mindful of the marks you make. I've done a number of videos about this and I am still working on getting this message across. Now, I've just happened to have some green here. I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. For the sake of this video, it's the actual exercise that is important. Right, now, I did see one tree the other day, let me just do this, I think they'd used a chisel brush, it was a, a fir tree and it was, oh, I've got enough water on that, and it was, well, that is just not being mindful. It's using a chisel brush, which is great, but you can be much more thoughtful with a chisel brush. You can make it do different things. And often the trees, the fir, fir trees for example, they're not all even. Sometimes you might get a great big clump together or some little straggly bits. It may have got damaged in a storm and there's a gap. Let me just put a bit of brown down. Oh, okay. <laughs> See what I'm talking about. So think about the marks you're making. Please, 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 please think about the marks. This is a number 20, by the way. Okay. Whatever brush you are using, just think.
think about the marks. Okay, so let's come back to this over this side. So let's say we're I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start there because I've got the point of the brush, okay? And I'm going to flick up. And sometimes you do see the gaps between the, uh, the greenery. So I'm not just going, tree, done. I'm thinking about it. I'm almost designing it as I go. And if you go out and really look, a bit of a clump there, but it could be a clump. Sometimes they have little clumps with, with fur cones on. But go out, look, and I mean really, really look at what is happening because sometimes you'll get a long bit on a fir tree and then you get bits that come off like that and there might be some fir cones. So that is a way to just show you a bit better. Let me just move this across and get myself much space and we'll make a narrower tree. Okay, so we'll do. We'll have another another go now. So there, there's the trunky bits. Now you know a bit more what I'm talking about. And there it is, nice and solid, going into the ground. That's going to support a fair bit of growth up above. Now, we we'll use the chisel again, and you could put in the bulk of it. That's a nice colour. Don't get hung up about the colour. Okay, you could use that to get the bulk in, but look how I'm using it. I'm not just going da, 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 like that. I'm making it do some of the work for me. There's a clump there. Another clump down here, and usually they are broader at the bottom. Of course, they get a bit whippy, a bit thinner up above. Now, look how those colours are going. That's rather nice, isn't it? You see how I've used the brush, turned it to make changes. Then I'll go back to this other one. And sometimes they have a sort of a wobbly bit on the top. Well, you could put your fairy or your star. Drop more colour in there. I just want a bit more blue to make that dark and more solid. Of course, they can be really dense, can't they, in the middle? I'm not going to tell you what actual species that is doesn't matter but it's getting the shape I mean anybody I defy anybody to say that's an oak tree or a weeping willow you can see that it is some sort of a fir tree some sort of a Christmas tree something like that let's just mix a bit more color I do feel sometimes when I see some of my students work that it's been done rather quickly I finish first miss and that's not the point. Now you can fiddle with this and have a lot of fun. And the sun comes in front. Okay, so a lesson in mindful mark making and also thinking about how something is constructed. Okay, think about the process. And in nature, things aren't usually all the same unless you're talking about topiary. So I hope that helps you. Thank you.